Hello, and welcome back to Nerds of Legend. Uh, I'm your Dungeon Master, Ben. Uh, next to me is Joel. Below me is Brendan. And on the brown screen is Brian. He'll turn on his computer when he... Or turn on his camera when he's ready. Thank you all for joining us as we delve into the mysteries of Candlekeep. And last time, our adventurers received a tour of the Court of Air and rested a while at the hearth where they met Little One, a rather civilized mm -hmm. ogre with a circlet of intelligence, giving him the ability to live in society. Here they learned where to find Matrius the Sage. However, when they arrived at his study, nothing was there but an open book. Deciphering the notes in the margins, Mott was able to decode the password that revealed the hidden entrance to Festandia's mansion. There they found Matrius, who was ecstatic to have the entrance reopened, and rushed out. The last thing the players heard was a scream as the doors slammed shut. Uh, the party proceeded to explore the mansion, trying to find a way out. Uh, they found some strange books and various surprise sights, she says the magic confused in the mansion had brought various objects to life, not all of them friendly. After a harrowing fight against a swarm of books where Mop was almost crushed to death, the party decided to take a breather, which is where we are now. So, uh, just as a reminder to everyone, you're in room M3, which you can see on the screen. Uh, so, that's where you're at now. Uh, you consider it, uh, but you guys received a short rest, so you can do that when you get a chance. So, I just figured you guys kind of like took a breather and looked around and, you know, bandaged up wounds and stuff. So, that's where you're at now. What does everybody like to do? Um, I would like to start by a refresher. Is anybody, nobody's injured? Oh, I'm horribly injured. Well, you just got a short rest, so... Okay. It's better than nothing. So then, I am... So good. Mop might need some healing. I think Mop's the only one that's hurt right now. Yes. I was dropped to below fifty percent from one, one hit, <laughs> <laughs> one one uh, one set of books. All right, Death I'm gonna go and I will go up to you and um, would, would would you seem to be hurt? May I help you? I'm bleeding on the ground. Of course, you can help me. <laughs> oh well, you know, consent is key. <laughs> um. Oh shit! You're gonna take eleven points of healing. I'm back. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he say that we got a short rest? So that means you can spend your hit die, and you don't have to waste a spell. Yeah, a spell. Yeah, but I mean, hit. I I rolled hit die, and it still didn't get me up to a hundred. So. Oh, all right. Well, sure. that'll work. I'll take it. Again, as a reminder, you guys are in M three. You can take care of anything if you want to on a short rest. I believe you guys. Yeah, you you pretty much found everything in the in the yeah you did find everything in the library. Yeah, we uh we did a search of the room. We found a third book, mm -hmm. a blank one with a letter on it. So we have B, I, and R. And I think you found a letter opener. Yep, I B R. Yes. Okay, so that's where you're at now. You can choose a new room to go to or whatever you want to do. Um, I would like to go out to the door to the balcony. Yes. Okay, M2. Uh, so you walk out into a semicircular patio. Uh, it's paved in gray, gray flagstones against the building. Uh, you can see, and this is the first time you've really been able to see outside of the ma mansion, and just outside of the semicircle is pretty much just this swirling purple miasma that surrounds the mansion, that seems to surround the mansion. It's basically impenetrable to wherever you can see. I will become, I'm very uncomfortable, so I'm going to do a quick investigation yeah. of anything around to see if there's anything of note. I can tell you right now, there's nothing out here. You can just, it's just kind of This like place a, is terrible. I would like yeah. to go back and hide. Yeah. It's like, have you guys seen those like weird liquor bottles that they make now that have, has like the mica in it, so like it swirls around and looks like a funky snow globe. That's what it looks like out there. Just like sparkly and cloudy and purple and pink and blue and stuff. 
So, yeah, there's nothing out here to look at other than look at the outside, which gives you the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, I go back and I go yeah. back and after as quick as I can. I'm like, and I look. I'm like, well, there's nothing to see out there. Yeah, it's literally nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd hate to fall off. Um, there are two sets of stairs. We could try taking one that we haven't taken yet because we went down. So, so we you go took up, right? you took the secret okay. stairs. Uh, <laughs> you guys found the secret stairs immediately. Before the regular stairs, we're yeah. like, oh, the real staircase, we could do So better. you went down to the basement already. The, these go up, and then there's the rest of the first floor. Um, I think we should clear uh, the rest of the maybe third look, floor, please. Should we maybe finish the entire first floor? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Okay. Uh, which um, room would you like to go in? I would like to walk to M6. Okay. So, uh, the, you, as you walk up to M6, uh, the door to this room is uh, slightly open, um, and you can hear, smell the aromas of cooking as you enter what looks like a kitchen, is, uh, enter a kitchen. There's a large iron stove that takes up one wall, and then the rest of the room is filled with large tables and racks lined with hanging pots, pans, and cooking utensils, and everything is sparkling clean. Uh, do you enter oh the room, or are you just just look in, or what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna. I would go in. Okay. As soon as you walk in, you hear a flapping of wings as two small forms land on the nearest table, and they bow, be, bow low before you and ask, "How can we help? You? We have helped your idle guests cooking, cleaning, mending your clothes, perhaps." What? What what are you saying? Would you like would you like cooking? Would you like cleaning? Or would you like your clothes fixed? We can, we would love to help you anyway or we can. We love our own of dust. Insight check. And yeah. uh insight check. Uh you're looking at these and you have like enough knowledge of uh like arcane to know that these are two homunculi and they are purely just excited to see people. Can I have something to eat, please? Yes, yes, of course! Um, my name is Cuban and this is Coriander. Um, and they go and, like, busy themselves with, uh, cooking. I'm never gonna remember any of their names. As long as they know how to make a souffle. <laughs> so so now, well, we have to wait a while for that, asked young dusts. Um, we don't need a souffle. Maybe like a sandwich or something quick. I almost um, died. I'd um, like to yes. enjoy life. Okay, that's wonderful, but uh, I undied you, and you're fine. Um, we have some things to be looking for, so we can get nice food after we leave, but right now. Um, and then I'm going to turn to the three. What What can you tell about the, the I don't know, master, the person... Whose house is this? Oh, yes. Um, my, um, Cuban was created by, uh, Phil Stanley, uh, Coriander, uh, that's me, was, uh, created by Freyot. Uh, they went away a long time ago. We don't know where they went. And yet you stay here. By how? That's where, that's where we return to stay. They're homunculi, it's their job. Would you like to leave? Oh, no, 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 no. Ma- oh, so you're ma- happy here, just, ma- just waiting ma- in the kitchen. Master's told us to stay, so we stay. I'm going to lean over to, to Mop and be like, do, do they understand this, or are they, are they happy? Are they actually okay with that? It's part of their being to do what their master tells them. The only way they'd leave is if they thought their master told them to do so. Uh, could I get a... Um, so they're not, like, forced, they're not slaves, then. Uh, uh, Mop, can I get a intelligence or arcana check from you? Sure. Murph, this brings joy. What brings joy? Enslavement? You're a terrible person. It's, it's, one second. 
That is a 22. Okay. So you know enough about uh, magic stuff and, like, wizard stuff that homunculi... There, there's two very important things about homunculi. The first is there that a master can only have one homunculus at a time. And the second fact is that a homunculus dies when its master dies. So you know that their masters are still alive. They're just not here. So... Or if he really cares so much about these uh, servants, find the masters, bring them back. We can free them. As of right now, all they're going to want to do is what they were told. Mm-hmm. And you're surprisingly expedient right now. You had to learn how to like. And then all of a sudden, Cumin, Cumin, Cumin runs. Cumin like flies up to you with a sandwich. This is acceptable. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think? I was surprisingly expedient. That's right, Murph. You were learning how to say hi to people, and now you want to get out of here? Mm-hmm. I almost died. I'm going to have a sandwich at the very least. <laughs> I mean, I went outside, and we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Like, this is an uncomfortable place. Go out there and look. Murph. It's very un- No. Don't Don't fall pretend off. like you understand this. Like, it's... I don't understand it, which is why I'm inside eating a sandwich. That, I get. <laughs> you also I will know also, as, uh, as... I'm like, I will, I will also have a sandwich. Oh, there plus, plus. Um, would you like a sandwich? Wait, wait. I would like a book. And I hold up the books with the letters on them. Oh, oh, that's uh, a very good question. You, you know, you know how to get out of here. Uh, you hold one of the, the one letter books on there? Yes, I do. Oh, Master said never to touch those books. We are not supposed to touch those books. Do you know what those books are? Project. No. We don't Can you leave this room? Yes. We help tidy up the mansion. They're just all over the place, we, but we're not allowed to touch them, so we don't touch them. When was the last time you had cleaned this mansion? Uh, pr- uh, pr- I don't know. Yesterday, maybe? So where were the books yesterday? If you can't clean them, you have to surely clean around them. Were they hidden? Uh, Mop, uh, in this place, I don't sure if time works same. Yeah, Mop. Time does. Time works weird here. Oh, uh, Mop. Sorry. No, um. Mm, yes, no, maybe you're right. I I don't know. I don't. I don't. I cook. I clean. And 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 we. It's, it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's it's okay, relax, calm, it's fine. fine. One second. Does food go bad here? Oh, no, very good question. Ah, no, I would like to look at my sandwich, but he gave here. But does it ever get rotten? You ever throw anything away? Mm, no, where would we throw it away? Is there ever I food smell my sandwich. Doesn't get eaten? What happens to it? Uh, it just goes away. We clean it up. What's that? I, I want to investigate my sandwich. Like, smell the mayonnaise and, like, lift the bread <laughs> up and look at it. Yeah. It's a, it's a perfectly good sandwich. Better I question will take is, where do they get the Tentative food? bite of my sandwich. It's yeah. Just, wh- what kind of meat is this? Um, pantry meat. And they point to the door, the pantry door behind them. I'm going to go into the pantry. Okay. Uh, And you see that the shelves in this pantry are stocked with sacks of flour, vegetables, preserved meats, and other staples, and all the dry goods needed to sustain a household. I'm going to look through the shelves a little bit more carefully. Uh, Let's see. See if there's anything else. No, it's pretty much just like it's a standard pantry. Uh, there's, you know, everything looks good. You don't like see any hint of any like rotten food. In fact, it looks like it's all in pristine condition. Well, I'm more specifically looking for a book. There isn't one. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I, I picked up what you were throwing down there, Brian. <laughs> I I would like to go and look through the pantry as well, but then. Put flour on my hands and leave handprints on the wall. Mm. Uh, on the outside, like, the door. 
and then wait to see if they clean it up. You're going to wait here. So the one you see wait, one of the how- homunculuses like look at like see what you do and like one of their eyes twitch, but then they immediately go and like rush to like clean it up. I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's, that's what I wanted guys. to see. I wanted. Guess we, I wanted guess we just clean. And and how long ago did you say you cleaned that up? That. Uh, yeah. Just now. Thank you. And I'm gonna go uh, eat my. Sa- I'm gonna like peer, like start meandering around M6 and look through the door into M8, like just kind of like. Like I'm, I'm like walking and like just looking at stuff. Uh, what were you gonna see? Say, Brendan. I'm gonna take something from the pantry, like a bo- like a bag of flour or something, and then close the doors and then open them again. Okay. Uh, the you do that, and the flour is still in your hand, but there's like the flour the flour that you took away. Is back in its, there's like a bag back in its place. I um this isn't stealing, because it's still there. I just have a copy. Um, I'll, I'll keep this. <laughs> Very well. Interesting. You said that there's a different door out of this place. Yeah. So off to the right, there's a door uh, to M eight. I will go through it. Okay. Um, as you enter what appears to be a dining room, there's uh, large windows that form the entirety of one wall looking out on three uh, planted beds filled with vegetation. And within the room, there's a crystal chandelier hanging above a table made of dark wood. There are six matching wooden chairs with scarlet cushions surround- surrounding the table. And there's a seventh chair that sits alone in the far corner. Do the homunculi follow us into this room? Right. Could, uh, do the, the homunculi follow you? Yeah, do they follow us or do they stay in the kitchen? Oh, they just stay in the kitchen. Was that all you were needing, guests? Mm-hmm. That's all I need. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I go into the, the room with the big long table. Just a just a quick question. Um, what's that extra chair for? Uh, first of all, uh, did you enter the room, Brian? Or uh, yes. Okay. As soon as you enter the room, uh, let's see. One second. Sorry, I didn't have this page ready. Who is it? Is it an art? Do you have an art? No, I don't have an art. Ah. Is it an art? (laughs) He's like, nope, roll initiative. Right? You were nice. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. As soon as you step into the room. Shit, I didn't even get my dice out. What were they thinking? Um, the chair, uh, jumps at you, Brian. Which chair? The chair that's closest to you, right, uh, right at the entrance to M6. Okay. And, uh, it swings at you for... Does a 22 hit? Yes. Uh, it swings at you for, uh... And bites down on you for uh, actually no, it just swings a pseudopod at you and hits you for uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage, and you are now stuck to it. Okay, roll initiative, gentlemen. All right. You just activated my trap card. <laughs> Twenty-three. 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 So everybody else. Seven. Fifteen. Fifteen. 
All right, Mop, you're up first. All right, for starters, is it just this chair or are all the chairs coming to life? Just the one chair. Uh, bolts aren't going to do much. I'm going to run up and just try to splinter this thing with my short sword. Okay. Uh, roll your attack. Need to, need to get it off Gideon. That's a dirty 20. Uh, that's definitely going to hit. All right, I'm going to hit for four points of damage. For four points of damage? You say four? Yeah. Okay. All right. And Gideon. What's... Okay. Or no, sorry, it's the Mimic's turn. Uh, the Mimic is going to attempt to bite you, since you have it grappled. Since it has you grappled, I should say. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. And that hit. is... Ooh. That is... Uh, nine points of damage. Okay, I'm down. Uh oh. Alright, uh, Dulmec, it's your turn. I, I, I need a, de a, a dexterity saving throw, please. Okay. So that's not one of its strong suits. No, that's fantastic. Uh, but it rolled an 18. <laughs> Well, shit. <laughs> I do sacred flame for seven points of damage. But that if, if he wins, he doesn't get any of it, right? That's it's correct. So, because it's a cantrip. Yeah, shit. Well, then nothing. Very impressive god of flame. It's uh, dodged by a chair mimic. Do you have a bonus heal or anything that you can do? I do. I can do a bonus action. Um. I can, I look and as a bonus action, I will cast um, Healing Word at Gideon for five points. All right. Okay. You're back up, Gideon. Uh, Mop, it is now your turn. I'm going to keep swinging. I don't like the fact that I just took Gideon out. Mm -hmm. He seemed really, really fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a 14. 14. That'll actually do it. Uh, roll your damage. Lucky me. Ooh, Meteor. That's a 6. Ooh. Okay. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Uh, so, as you hit it, and since it lost interest in Gideon, since it just took him down doesn't notice that he's gotten back up yet. It's going to turn around and take a swing at you. Yikes. And it's going to swing for its pseudopod. It's, I assume, a uh, 21 hits. I'm sorry. I'm rolling so good with this thing. <laughs> good grief. Yeah, that's going to hit. Uh, it hits you for six. Okay. Gideon, it is now your turn. I'll spend half my movement to get up. And then I'm going to uh, attack this thing with both my quarterstaff, and then I will use my bonus action to hit it with my fist. The okay. purple die will be for the fist. The red die will be for the quarterstaff. Okay. Okay, so the purple die is a natural one, so that's probably going to miss. Uh, yeah. The quarterstaff, however, is uh, 15. 15 will do it. Okay. Roll your damage. And uh, that would be eight points damage. Uh, eight points? Uh, so, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, Mop, you are now grappled by the mimic, by the chair. So, you're stuck to its weird pseudopod thing. Uh, Dual, it is your turn. 
No. Um, I would like to go up to it and swing at it with my mace. I do not hit. It is a five. All right. Any bonus action you can do for healing or anything that like that? Or are you out of spell slots? I'm I'm out of spell slots. I only had two. Okay. Uh, then, Mop, you are up next. All right. I don't really have many other options being grappled here. Um, part of me thinks it's damaged enough that rather than try to ungrapple, I'm just going to keep swinging. Yeah, if you look at it, it looks like it's hurting pretty bad. I was going to say. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll try to finish this off. Uh, 17. That'll do it. Okay. Uh, four points. Four points. Slow and steady. Okay. Uh, that is the Mimic's turn. It's going to try and bite you. Ooh. This time, I don't think it did it. Uh, it only got a 12. Yes, it doesn't hit. Alright, so it tries to bite, and you're like able to... like. What's, what's your weapon that you use? Uh, right now, I have a short sword. Okay. Uh, you're able to... like push the sword in between its mouth so it doesn't, like, it's weird, like, mouth thing, and it's like, ah! <laughs> you know, can't get to you. Uh, Gideon, you're up next. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, again, try to attack it with both my fists and forge that. Okay, go for it. Um, so, the quarter staff. Excuse me. 18. No, and really. the fist. Okay. Uh, so I'll roll for the quarter staff first. Okay. Uh, roll for that. That's uh, five points damage. Okay. Uh, this thing is like, it's very much like flagging. Uh, you can tell uh, that it doesn't need a whole lot more punishment before it's going to be done so. Does a 13 hit with the fist? It does. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a 12. So I'm sorry. No. That's, that's, that's going to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Then the fist is going to add another five points damage. All right. Yeah. So uh, uh, finish him, Brian. How would, how does how would Gideon like to finish this mimic chair? Um, I guess I'm just going to pull uh, an Iron Man, and I'm just going to be like, "That looks important," and just like pull it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so Brian, uh, Gideon, as soon as like he like punches into its mouth with his his uh, with his fist, and the man looks like, and he like grabs the tongue and just like rips it out, and just like fucking, uh, I can't think of a Mortal Kombat thing, but he just like rips the tongue out of the mimic and it's like, and like Melody. falls over. <laughs> Flawless victory. So, and you guys have defeated the Mimic. Gideon defeated the Mimic. I bled a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, you, I you, did, you did most of the damage. Well, and steady. Yeah. That was, that, guys, the, the furniture is going to kill us in this place. No other chairs are attacking, right? Just that one. No. Uh, you can surmise that basically what happened is the reason there was that chair in the corner was that the Mimic had gotten into there, shuffled that chair over into the corner, and taken its place. And was kind of, just kind of like waiting. Sneaky git. Yeah, it's been a sneaky git. I'm going to kind of uh, look about the room. Is there anything on the table or anything on any of the chairs? Uh, Anything in this room in particular note? Uh, the only thing of really particular note is there's a service of silverware for six people on the table, probably worth around uh, 20 gold pieces if you want to take it. Yeah, sure. Um, you, you explained there was a large window uh, overlooking four planters outside, right? Right, like so if you can see sort of that area of M9 out there, there's the planters outside, 
Yes, I have no interest in going outside, but I would like to look through the window and see if there's anything of import out there. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. So if you look around sort of out, it looks like it's sort of an arboretum place. Uh, there's a bunch of open and arched walls. Uh, there's flowering shrubs and small trees growing between p- the paths that meet in this semicircular patio. There's no sun that you can see, but there are two glowing globes that hang above the plants, bathing them in light. Uh, there are also, um, you can see, like, pretty beautiful, like, colorful flowers all over the place in there. Okay. Um, I, I have no interest in going outside, so um, I will go into the hallway. Okay. I, I let everybody know. I have no interest in going back outside. That is war. Mm-hmm. I will go outside this time. You're going to go outside? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, Brian, like I, like I described, you can see there's like some colorful flowers everywhere. There's those two glowing orbs that seem to bathe the whole area in light. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Uh, so as you walk into the arboretum, you can hear some like giggling noises, and then uh, as you go out there, um, all right, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. All right. Uh, that would be a 15. Uh, you pass. So there's, like, a puff of, like, psh in your face. Uh, you, like, momentarily seem, like, a little, uh, confused. Uh, but you're able to, like, keep your wits about you. And you just hear... (laughs) Can I indicate where the puff came from? Um, well, you can kind of, it was like, the puff was, like, directly in front of you, and then, like, the giggling, like, like, faded away, like it was moving away. Okay, can I follow the giggling? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, again, I need another wisdom saving throw, as, like, from behind you this time. There's another, okay. like, puff of gas in your face. Even better. Okay. Again, you, like, feel a little, like, woozy for a second, and then, like, you shake off whatever um, uh, was going on. This is annoying. Stop it. Oh, why would you think it's annoying? We think it's funny. And do I see where that voice came from? You don't see any where it came from. You can hear where, uh, like a direction. I'm just looking for a book. No books here. Books inside. And then again. Wisdom, give me two wisdom saving for us. <laughs> okay. Do, do we see Gideon talking to himself and like flailing around outside? Yeah, and you see like gas just like, psh, psh, just like, like jets from like invisible sources. Okay, well, one of them is probably going to fail. Is it a uh, nine? Ah, uh, yep. So, uh, as soon as you get hit by that, you're, you're completely taken over by a state of like euphoria you're you're just so happy that you're just like ah. and then you like you, you try to think what was i worried about again um and can i get a, a d6 roll from you 
Okay. Four. Four. Um, uh, all right. So you, you, like, as much as you, like, try, like, you can't remember, like, like, you remember, like, there was something annoying you, but you can't remember why it was annoying, but you, you're not able to really feel like doing anything, and you just kind of, like, stumble in, a, like, a random direction. Like, you stumble into one of, like, the flower planter things. Okay. So... I just lay among the flowers then. <laughs> yeah. And then as you like lay down, uh, as like right in front of you, uh, there's a out of invisibility. What are you guys doing while Brian, while uh, getting. I'm in the hallway. I can't see anything. I'm in the hallway, remember? Yeah. But Murph, what are you doing? Or Mop, what are you doing? Hmm. They don't Fall. hear any of this? I didn't go outside, no. Um. I was quietly bleeding. I had a I had a madcap idea, but I don't want to waste what magic I have left. Um, I think I, I think I want to try to bail Gideon out, but maybe like pick one of the uh, like setting cloths off of the table and just kind of hold over my mouth and try to pull him back inside. And as you're as you try to do that, you see like right above. Uh, so, um, what, where are you head. going? You see, uh, he's in, uh, Gideon is no, in No, no, he had to go in the hallway, so I'm asking, where are you going? Like, because he saw the window, and I'm yeah. in the hallway, so he had to go out into the hallway, into the door. I'm asking right. him where he's going. Gideon's in trouble. He's oh, shit! Okay. Unsurprisingly happy. <laughs> Weirdly he's happy? He's happy? <laughs> is that really trouble? The fact that he's that happy that quickly in a place where oh. furniture kills you. And there was the whole, you know, bath bomb thing. Yeah. Um, as okay. you guys um, are I discussing that, uh, Brian, uh, on like a branch in a tree right above your head since you laid down in the flowers, there's, uh, you see a small dragon with butterfly wings appear. Uh, two of them, actually. And they're both they're like... Dragon. See, yes, stay for fun. It's more fun out here, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. But why are you laughing then? I don't you know. You seem to enjoy your time. Oh, stay and play. We haven't played with anyone in so long. Okay. Okay. What are you guys doing now? I, I am going to follow Mop wherever he goes, so. Part of me thinks we can sort of, like, cover our mouths to protect from the gas and just kind of each grab a half, like, hands and feet and just bring them back inside. All right, uh, so, Brian, you can take and make another wisdom save again. It's been long enough. That's a natural one. All right, uh, that's that's not going to cut it. You're still just like you're you're so taken up with this like feeling of euphoria. You've like normally you try and be very stoic about things, and this is just like you're like this is nice. <laughs> Um, and then the, uh, as you guys enter, you see, you briefly see those dragons, uh, before they, again, disappear, uh, Murph, and, uh, or Mop, and then all of a sudden you get another puff of, you see a puff of gas in your face, and I'll, since you tried to, you covered your mouth, I'll allow for a uh, advantage on this wisdom saving throw. Okay. Here we go. First one's a 16. Okay. Second, it was a net one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need two wisdom saving throws. A second wisdom saving throw. Because you, yeah. they blasted you. They blasted right. both of you. You twice. 
Oh, so one from Murph, or do you have to go mm. again? You again, because they're take you're taking away their playmate. Right, that's true. All right, this one oh, is an eight with advantage. Oh gosh, that one's a ten. <laughs> now you're under the spell too. Uh, roll me a d6. Sure. Uh, one. Okay, yeah, so you can't do anything. You're, like, just come overcome by this euphoria effect, and uh, you just kind of, like, stumble in a random direction, just like kind of you saw Gideon do. Murph, what are you doing? Um, I I am walking in. I do not have the presence of mind to cover my mouth, so... Okay. Luckily, uh, they just used their euphoria breath, and it hasn't recharged yet. Uh, so I, I look and I, I saw the dragon though, right when I came you in. You did. You saw that they poofed away, but then like um, mop came under the same effect. Uh, what what are you? What are you doing? It doesn't appear to be harmful, but what are you doing? Oh, they're just having fun with us. They came to play. Didn't you come to play? I we did not. We need to find books to escape. Why would you want to escape? Isn't this place pretty? Don't you want to play with us? It's lovely, but it's it in our we we don't live here. Like we have to go. We, we we want to find a way out of this place. Oh. Do, do you like living in this place? Oh, we love it here. In in such a small area. We can go wherever we want in the mansion. There's more to the world than the mansion. Oh, why would we go anywhere else? This place has all that we need. There are some places that look like this that go on forever. <laughs> all right, uh, M- M- Mop and uh, Gideon, I can you can make another save. I'm just I'm just NPC walking <laughs> into the class. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You're> like it's <laughs> like bumping into it, just like fifteen. Ah. That'll do it. You you snap out of it, and you're like. The hell was that? <laughs> is this one on advantage um, again, or is it just normal? Uh, just normal. You're just trying to throw off the effect. Yeah, uh, you got advantage normal. on avoiding the gas. You didn't get advantage on uh, the follow-up effects. Yeah, that's uh, enough. Normal. You snap out of it. Okay. Do I know um, enough about these creatures to know if they're like harmful or not? Like. Uh, I mean, I as a player know these are classified as good characters, but like... Yeah, I think you... I mean, you could probably be able to tell at this point. They don't mean any harm. They just want friends. Yeah. They just want to play. Um, you want... I don't so know I'm gonna, necessarily know about fairy dragons, but... But I, I could tell they're not evil. Yeah, I mean, they haven't done anything but, like, right. make your friends... Tr- I would the like only thing they've make, made your friends do is trip balls. I would like <laughs> to make... For se- uh, a persuasion and try to convince them to leave with us. Mm. I was like, you know, I I was raised in a place where there's beautiful gardens as far as the eye can see. Would you like to see them? Mm. I'm trying to figure out if they're like found here or not. They are. I think they're just here as sort of like a. Uh, you can roll. Oh, D&D Beyond, show me some love today. Well. Not good enough. They like it here too much. They like messing with the cats and the homun- homunculi and stuff, and they like their garden. Be like again. What we we have everything that we could need here. We don't want to leave. Um, I will grab the hands of my two compatriots and be like, "Well, it was wonderful talking to you, and I'm sorry you don't want to see the garden." Why do you want to leave? Um, uh, we will visit again. I promise. Fire. We have. Uh, uh, we have there's, 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 there's a fire. There's a fire. We have to go inside. There's a fire. There's a fire. We'll put it out. You stay here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, on, I walked into the hallway. And I was like, it was going so well. You didn't have to lie to them. 
lying is so easy. Okay. But so is truthing. You can truth in here. Okay. I'll lie out there. Do it. Do we have Gideon? Yeah, yeah. I have both. I grabbed yeah, both you, of your hands. You guys are oh. both snapped out of it. Uh, right. Are you guys doing anything after your uh, little trip there, or perhaps we should head to the staircase? And we're done with this floor, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, a reminder: I know Gideon and Mop are both hurt right now. Uh, I'm out of spells, uh, but you guys did get. Uh, healing potions, I believe. Two healing potions from the mm-hmm. lab. If you guys yep. need to use them. So. I mean, if you want to toast, I'll toast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Alright, so you guys are going up the stairs then? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we'll go up, up, up. Up, up, up the stairs we go. Um, sorry. <laughs> so you come up the stairs, and uh, there's the landing at the top is occupied with a suit of armor, just like holding a long sword uh, on a stand in front of a large window. Uh, so you can tell that the armor is decorative, but the armor, the helmet, and the sword are items of good. Quality. Does it look new? So, sorry, I'm looking. Uh, the armor, it doesn't necessarily look new, but you can just tell that they're like, you know, this is an actual helmet and long sword. Uh, you do notice that there is a trapdoor above the armor. I'd like to take the sword from the suit of armor. Okay. And I'm going to use that sword to try to poke and get the trap door to, like, fall down. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's a sort of, like, staircase thing uh, that just opens into what looks like an attic. You can go up the stairs or up the ladder. Okay. Well, I'll keep the Lord Longsword for the moment, and uh, instead I will head off to my left. Okay, so you're not going up into the attic? You're going no, just left. not just yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're going to go in there towards M11? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Are you going straight in, or what are you, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I, I walk into the room. Okay. Uh, so most of this room uh, you see is sort of, it's like a laboratory. Uh, most of the room is taken up by long wooden tables covered with glass vessels and books. Um, and then along both both walls, uh, there are cabinets with glass doors and, that contain all manner of special specimens. Um, below the ceiling in the middle of the room, there are colorful globes that circle each other, uh, sort of like a planetary system, and then the far wall is almost completely covered by a map of the night sky, with a golden sunburst in the center above a closed door. Okay. I'd like to investigate the room to uh, try to find any kind of books that might have letters on the spine. Okay. Uh... So among the books on the middle table, uh, you do find uh, a book with the letter T on it. Okay. I will take it. Um, Is there anything else of particular note in this room? Uh, You notice something in particular about the map on the one side of the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some stars that are represented by just dots or circles, but there are five uh, very prominent stars that uh, look like there's silver suns. Yeah, so there's there's five very prominent stars, but then most of the stars are just dots or small circles. Do the stars that are prominent have letters on them? No. Okay. 
So there's uh, yeah. what's everybody else doing at this time? I inspect. Yeah, could I inspect like the the lab equipment on the tables, specifically the vials and that sort of thing? Yeah, you just see it looks like there's just some sort of uh, it's like lab equipment there that's you're studying that you can tell that from the books on the tables that's like natural sciences, astronomy, astrology, physiology, natural philosophy. It's kind of just basically like a chemistry or physics lab. There's nothing of note in here beyond the map and the book that Gideon found. Uh, you took note that it was a letter T, uh, Brian? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mop's probably going to purse his lips a little bit, feel bad about what the party might think, and then probably probably grab two of the books. Cool. They're not they're... particularly valuable. They're just about like different like science stuff. He doesn't know much about natural sciences. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know much about physiology, and they're interesting. And okay. he's very. You just put in your stealing. inventory that you've got like an, a book on sci- on natural like physics and chemistry, and then a book on physiology. So. Thank you much. So there's a door through the other end of the room, or you can go back to where you were. Do we want to go on to M12? Uh, yes. Alright, so as you enter M12, which is past that star map, the door opens into a dark, open space, offering a view of the starry firmament of the night sky. There are five telescopes mounted on bronze plates that point towards the constellations above, and then in the middle of the space is a one-foot diameter sphere of clear crystal that sits on a circular brass stand. So this this room is almost like made to look and uh, like a like a hill on a moonless night. So there's this beautiful constellations above. It feels like you're walking on grass, um, and the Murph, uh, do you follow them into this room? I do. Okay. Uh, as you do, the kind of the door kind of like closes on its own, and then you can see see the starry sky visible in all directions. So it's like a very illusory sort of like planetarium room. This is wonderful. Um, and I walk to one of the uh, telescopes and look through it. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you can change, uh, as you look through it, uh, you can stay, see that it's like pointed at a random spot in the night sky, uh, but it's really easy to sort of change the orientation gonna, of the telescope. I'm just going to look around. Yes. I'm just going to like scan the skies with it. Yep. Do I see anything? Anything that stands uh, out or just look out? Huh? Uh, you see just the the starry sky. Are you trying to look at anything in particular or just, like, look around? Is, is there anything of note that it is looking at this moment? Like, is there anything unusual? Like, a particularly bright thing or, like, a dark spot or cloud or anything that is unusual to the stars? Does it just look like a regular night? It looks like a regular night. No, uh, there's no clouds. It's basically a cloudless, moonless night. Did you, okay. did you recall what, what was on the walls of M11, the previous room? Uh, you remember that there was a sort of map of, like, a star map where that had uh, most stars were pretty much just, like, normal. And then there were some that there were, like, five stars that were brighter than the others and were actually, like, rendered to look like very, like, prominent silver suns. Gentlemen. Let's count the amount of telescopes in this room. There's five. Let's find those stars. Okay. Uh, does does anything stick out to where they look like those stars? In well, we we should be able to find them in in uh, relation to 
other constellations. Yep. So, so you're able to figure out basically, you know, it takes a little bit of doing, you know, going back and forth, but you're able to figure out which stars to like point the different telescopes at. And then once you align the telescopes, you have solved my planetarium puzzle. Uh, you align them. Uh, you realize that those telescopes, uh, the light that is focused from is focused from those telescopes through the telescopes onto the crystal ball, and they refract and illuminate a secret door at S, leading to area M13. Is it really bad I just noticed at S now? <laughs> no, not necessarily. Uh, I feel like for gameplay, that's good, probably good the best. Pen. Good for the DM, yeah. 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 So yeah, so it's uh, you can now see plainly visible. There's a door off of this area into M13. Uh, may I have the honors if no one else will go? Oh no, yes, by all means, go ahead. I will. I will be right behind you. It's just all very exciting. Okay. Seems to be more of your thing, anyway. <laughs> Is, uh, is M13 illuminated? Yeah, so it's just uh, normally illuminated. Uh, there's only one thing that you can see in this book, in this room. And there is, uh, the room is bare, except for a bookshelf covered in chains against one wall. There's a plain wooden bench and a reading desk built into the shelves. And the book a book with a bust of a mage on its cover sits on the desk. Can I recognize the mage? Uh, it looks like it looks like a very close image to what you saw before on the on cover. The book that you have, yeah, on the book, yeah, on the book from um, that got us in here. Yep. I do an arcana check on it before I touch it. An arcana check on what? The book? Uh, on the book. Sure. How far away are you from it? Uh, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm on the 5x5 five five square when you first enter. Okay. Uh, 19. Oh! <laughs> uh, you can tell there's, like, a lot of magic going on here. You can assume with how, like, the... Uh, how everything's kind of set up that this is like the probably the most important books that were you know they're not in like the main library this is like the secret knowledge for the wizard lady I'm going to do the opening sequence of Raiders and I'm going to swap out the book on physiology with a very important book, and just kind of... As soon as you touch the book... It seemed an... Oh! Something <laughs> happened. Yeah, here uh, we go. You are going to get... A book is going to come flying off of the shelves. And, Again? Yeah. <laughs> off of the chain shelves, and... <laughs> oh, it barely, like... <laughs> the book, like, about smashes you in the face. It just misses. Uh, but it's going to make a second attack. Oh, that's a nat 20. I'm not going to double the damage, though, because you'll die. Um, <laughs> and, uh, oh, you got lucky. It only hits you for three points of damage, but a book, like, shapoosh, like, flies off of the bookshelf and, like, smacks you upside the head. That's going to, like, pratfall me, so I just immediately just, like, hit the floor. <laughs> yeah. Ow! Yeah. Uh, all right. Roll for initiative, gentlemen. You just activated the chained library. God damn it! All right. Maybe you should stop touching things. Just. <laughs> I look at Gideon as we're rolling, and I say, "Maybe like we should hit him with a stick next time." He goes to, every time his hand reach out, just hit him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always you that like activates no. the trap mop. <laughs> uh, what are you guys' initiative rolls? 
Uh, 13. 21. 4. I'm killing it today. These dice are retired for the remainder of this game. <laughs> <laughs> you have saddened me, dice. One second. Uh, Gideon, you're up first. Okay. How many books are attacking? Uh, so it's like... Uh, you, you figured out it's not like like the books attacking, it's the library, the chained library itself. So these like chained books are like flying out and like like trying to hit people. Oh, it's the okay. bookshelf attacking? Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah. We, could, we, we could just tip it over. <laughs> uh, so just so I'm clear, uh, we have the book, the like mage on it. Uh, and what other no, I don't think items it did just it, it didn't it as soon as he like touched it it smacked him. Yeah, the, the transaction was not complete. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a transaction of of HP from me to the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh so what did you say exactly was on the uh the desk there? Um so there's a book still there. Mm -hmm. But there's like these chained books are like kind of like sw sw swinging around, whiling, and like trying to hit anything that comes near. Okay. And uh, how long is the chain? Uh, it's got a reach of five feet, so it's like okay. enough that like basically, if you're in this room, it can hit you. Okay. Uh, um. I suppose I'll attack the uh, the bookshelf. Yep. Uh, roll to hit. Okay. Attacking with both the quarter staff and the fist. Okay. Again, uh, fist is going to be the purple die. Uh, so the fist is definitely going to hit with the 24, I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, I don't know if the quarter staff does, though, because that's only a 13. Uh, that is barely doesn't hits, but your fist connects. Okay. So like you you sl you slam into a book with its fist, and it like flies back into the into the bookshelf, and then another you like trying to hit like an another one with the quarter staff, and it just like parries your like staff with one of its chains. Uh, maximum damage is seven, though. Nice, good hit. And uh, then I'm going to. Uh, Spend my movement to back up out and back into like M12. Okay. Uh, you would provoke an opportunity attack, I believe. That's okay. Okay. So it's going to try and like swing another book at you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a hit. Uh, and because I rolled a 20. Uh, 22. <laughs> Uh, and that is, but it just hits for three points of damage. Okay. Uh, Murph. Or no, sorry, it's Mop's turn. Can I try to, like, push off the wall and, and, and tip the bookcase over? Um, uh, it looks like it's pretty much, like, connected to the wall. Like, it's not oh, like it a is. normal, like, just, it's like, not bookcase. It's, it's like... Okay. It's like built into the wall. Right. Mm. If I move, I'll provoke an attack of opportunity. Yeah. No, you won't. It's already used its reaction for the turn. Oh, that's true. So does it only get one, or does it get like reaction for every book? Because <laughs> it's got a bunch of... You it's know, one entity. It's just one uh, reaction. Yeah, okay. right, cool. um, I'll drink a health potion. I need it. Yeah, you're welcome for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is this um? Is this potion? Is this um? Minor? Or is, is it like D six plus? Um, it's a oxygen? potion of healing. So D four, two D four. It's D four, two D four. Okay. Yeah. Minor is one D four, right? Yeah. Two D four plus two, isn't it? 
Yeah, uh, I rolled. I rolled a fat one. I rolled nine, so I'm I'm pick up the full. Okay. Um, that's a minor action, so I can. Yep. You can so as long as attack. I, yeah, yeah, I can still swing. I'll I'll do that. All right. Uh, roll your attack. Mm, that was a net one. Mm. Yep. Yep. Doesn't do anything. You like hit, and it's like. Like one of the books, like the books, like form in a hand, and it's just like ah ah ah. Is there like just like smacks your hand, uh, Murph? It's your turn. I need a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Oh, that's me. Uh, Dex save. That's a fourteen. Son of a... You're kidding me. Okay. Nothing happens. A bookshelf that is actually, like, glued to the wall has enough yeah, I'm just, to that. It, It's able to it. dodge my firebolt. You just got done explaining that it's fixed to the wall. Yeah, and it's I like, somehow it hit. It's a, magic, it's a magic library. It batted it out of the way with one of the books on chains. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm, just, I'm just amazed that it's able to dodge... A flame bolt, like I okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I like to imagine that a very buckled, a fat buckled book on a chain just kind of like, <laughs> and like right, like a fireball into the wall or something. All right, it's a uh, well known to man. It's like going wax on wax off with books, you know. That is the library's turn. Um, it's going to make an attack on Murph this. and Mop. It's, uh, 12 to hit Murph. Misses. And a 13 to hit Mop. That's a hit. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be a... Uh, five points of bludgeoning damage, and you are now grappled by the chains forgot to do that last time. Everybody wants to hug me today. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's a back around to the top of the round with Gideon. Alright. Seeing that my friends did not retreat with me, I <laughs> go back into the room <laughs> and I am going I to give it uh, the double smacks. Okay. Uh, how does a 17 treat you for the lowest? That's going to do it, my friend. Okay. So then Roll your damage. Wolf will hit. It's going to be a fat turn. Mm-hmm. All right. And we got... Oh, that's not so great. Uh, so let's see here. That is uh, four and uh, five, so nine points damage. Not too shabby. All right. And then I'm going to take the rest of my movement to move back out through the door again. And I will provoke the attack of opportunity. All right. It's going to take a swing at you. Uh, it's going to miss. So. Okay. Too busy dodging fireballs. Yeah. All right, Mop, your turn. I'm grappled. Uh, I'm going to stab away. Yep. Uh, you can try to break the grapple, but mm -hmm. I'm not. A, I'm, not, I'm not a big dude, though. And then if I break the grapple, it hasn't done its attack of opportunity yet this turn. Yeah, it has. I'm just did. Yeah, it has. Oh, it has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, I believe you can use your acrobatic skill to try to get out of the, you know, grapple as well. I could use acrobatics, but then, like, if I'm not stabbing, I'm not exactly contributing. I'm, I'm not going to do much with crossbow bolts. Correct me if I'm wrong, DM. Is it not a move action to try to get, get break the grapple? Or is that a standard? Mm -hmm. I think breaking a grapple is usually an action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then disengage to beat the move. Um, 
there's I can't really sneak around a bookshelf. But, I mean, so the biggest help I can do with, for the party is stab. Um, I uh, I rolled Start a twenty-two shank in that shelf. That's gonna hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I rolled twenty-two shank. Um, eight damage. There you go. A solid blow. All right. Uh, eight damage. You said. Yeah. Uh, as you as you stab into the book as in the into the the library. Uh, you can see the the there's seems to be like magical ooze coming out of it, and it, there's like splinters flying off. So there's like it's you've you've, you've bloodied the library. Um, bloody the library. Oh, yeah, Murph, <laughs> it's your turn. Yeah, instead of like blood, it's like saps oozing out, and it's just yeah. like splinters flying everywhere. I'm gonna, I'm like I hate this place so much. I hate this place. <laughs> Uh, deck 30 saving throw again. Ten. You said ten? Mm. Finally, being a cleric is worth something. <laughs> Three. Three. Three points of flame Five. damage. Ooh, flame. That'll work well in books. Isn't it radiant damage, though? It is radiant. Blast. It just does normal amount of damage. It's a yes, magical even though library. Flame is in the name, yeah. Uh, all right. I hate, uh, this. I hate this place so much. <laughs> uh, that's the library's turn again. Again, it is kind of like, it's kind of just kind of like, since it's got uh, Mop sort of grappled, it's going to like uh, try and. Uh, oh, it's only going to be an 11 to hit. I'm, I'm safe. It tries to like, it tries to like smash you into the wall, and it just doesn't work. Uh, it's, you can tell it's getting like frazzled, and it's going to take another swing at uh, Murph uh, for fourteen. Misses. All right. So uh, that's its turn. Uh, Gideon. Okay. Back into the room to uh, try to whack it two times. Uh, ooh, uh, Whoa. natural 20 with the fist, ooh. um, and, uh, the other one is going to be a 16, so. Oh, oh, I forgot, I forgot this whole time. Yep. There we go. I'm sorry. I knew there was an art. Yeah, there was an art. I'm sorry. We're failed you, art here. I failed you. Um. Uh, yeah, so you give a smacky smack. Uh, what was the damage you said, Brian? I have not rolled damage yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, they both hit. Just you wait, DM. Has anyone else noticed the homunculus don't clean this room? It's the secret <laughs> door. Uh, total of eight damage. Okay. Eight. Uh, you can tell that that rattled it a little bit. Uh, but it's still kind of like it's still it's getting woozy. Uh, uh, am I doing extra damage for the crit? Oh yeah, you get a you get a double die for the crit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then that is another five points worth of damage. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, that was actually. Uh, I'm sorry, not five points. That is six points. I say eight. Eight was like with a crit is what I, I was like. Sword. I was like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, so it's still, like, it's barely, like, the, the, for so, somehow the library looks like it's, like, breathing hard. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> the top half of the bookshelf is leaning forward, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would uh, like to also <laughs> use my, the rest of my movement to go back out. It's mad at you. And it's provoking going attack. to uh, it's gonna fucking miss. Uh, it's 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 like takes a wild swing at you and barely the book like doesn't even like come close. It's just like Rah! so, and then it is a mop's turn. Okay, I'm gonna keep stabbing. So, anyways, I just kept stabbing. Oh, that's only a nine. I ain't gonna cut it. Ain't gonna cut it. Uh, Murph. Six. That's also not gonna cut it. 
Uh, yeah, I, the library is gonna. Can... The library is gonna like take a swing at each of you. Uh, that's a twelve at Murph at Mop. I oh, sorry, sorry. Safe. And that's a ten at two. Uh, Murph. So this thing's this thing's swinging wild too. It's, it can't do anything. You guys are like ah. There's too many like chains flying around. So like all of your attacks are getting like deflected by these flying chains. Um, that's around. Turn to you, Gideon. All right, Gideon will go back in and keep whacking. Okay, so lowest roll there was a seventeen. So I believe both will hit again. Okay. Uh, yep. Go ahead and roll your damage. Those both hit. Okay, so 12 points damage. Uh, how do you finish this library, Murph? Or, uh, uh, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, grab the, the chains as they, like, come, like, you know, flying at my friends and I, and, um, I just give it, like, a hard tug, and I, like, try to, like, rip it the wall. Okay. Uh, as you do that, uh, you see sort of the, 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 uh, all of the, the chains sort of like strain as it's like trying to hold back. And then you feel like a tug and it like breaks through the wall and just kind of like rocks backward and forward. Uh, but one ch- one book on a chain comes free in your hand, but the the library does not fall over. But it's very much like, and then it just lays still, as it kind of like rocks back and forth and comes to a. As it stops moving, I would like to then try to hit it with the sacred flame. <laughs> <laughs> the book is just like. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Holds open. <laughs> yeah, the, the book with the face that was like glaring at you, like just like. <laughs> You're a toilet paper. How did you guys almost die? Books. <laughs> Several times. Several uh, times. I came to a library and this, almost uh, me. Uh, as you look at this uh, ch- book on a chain in your hand. Uh, you mm-hmm. notice that it's uh, got some nice heft to it. Uh, and you notice the title on the cover says Martial Arts Techniques. Uh, and it's essentially a plus one flail. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know what? <laughs> Gideon just got himself a uh, <laughs> sweet new weapon. <laughs> <laughs> just, just adhere that chain to a stick, and then you just kind of home of that ass. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you do notice after that the uh, library starts rock stops rocking back and forth, like one book kind of like falls out, and uh, I you notice it's one of the books. It's got you saw you find a book with an L. Uh. So, so actually, the book that was on... Sorry, I misspoke. The book that was sitting on there that Murph tried to take that started this whole mess is the is one of the puzzle books. It's a book with an L on the spine. Okay. Uh, so that brings us back to... Uh, you're done and... You've basically cleared that wing of the, the mansion... So, is there anything else you guys would like to do there? Yeah, so, um... The book on the work. thing that you tried to uh, grab? Yeah, all this work. Uh, the book that I tried to grab that started the whole thing, can I just take that now? That's one of the puzzle books. That's the L book. That's the L oh, book. Oh, oh, it is the L yeah, book. Yeah, okay. so you do need it. <laughs> Alright, well, good. Uh, well... <clears throat> Alright, I'm um, gonna bleed quietly. I will actually look down to him, and uh, knowing that we don't have like any kind of like short rest back sort of thing, I will take the last remaining healing potion that I have on me, and I will hand it over to him. Very gracious of you. Thank you. 
cheers. Yes, I, I don't want to sleep in this mansion, so let's le- let's leave. I, uh, I gain four points, so I'm back up to ten, 10 out of eleven HP. Okay. Um, what I do is I actually go ahead and I take the secret door and I close it, keeping us in this room. Okay. And he murders all of us with his new book. He says, this is my house now. Uh, specifically, I look to you guys and I go, only one door to watch. We can take a bit of a rest. Oh my god, yes. Can we take a rest? <laughs> That's yeah, a great you, idea. You can you can definitely take a short rest. Should we uh should we order food? No, no. Can we I could use a long rest if if it's doable. If not, then I mean the much I know the house. We could be like drop it in the drop it in the, the room with the pit with the telescopes and then we'll just, you know Look around here, Mop, they don't clean. They well, don't come th- to this room. Not this one, but the adjacent one with, with the telescope. So we'll be like, hey, just, you know, door dash it, drop them down. And then when they leave, get, grab the food, hide in a little cubby hole. Can we, can we close the door to the planetarium and sleep in there like outdoors in this night? In the- See, that, now you're getting it. That sounds is like that a doable blast. thing? Yeah. Now it's just a camp out. Now it's I'm going to look at Gideon and be like, do you think we could actually camp in the second room, the one that's, like, outside. Uh, more I mean, doors still, to watch, but yeah, it's okay. Well, this door goes to nothing. That, I mean, essentially, it's we just still watch one door. Murph's got a great point. And then the homunculi know how to deliver food thing. here. And so, it'll be like camping with one door, but we also get takeout. <laughs> that's in it's filthy in here. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'm okay with sleeping in the field, but it's like it's giving me allergies. <laughs> yes, I have. I have a very sensitive palate. <laughs> He's like me, allergic to the entire outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> so then, are we taking a short rest or are we taking a long rest? I right. could use sleep because I have no more spells. I could allow. You, I'll, I'll allow you guys to take a long rest. I'll take first watch. Remember, like in this meantime, you like you've disappeared from this, like the other from the candle keep for will have disappeared from candle keep for like eight hours. So, it's a, there's a very good chance time operates differently here, like Narnia. Like Narnia. <laughs> there's nothing here but evil and Turkish delights. And oh, so we weren't exactly on a clock, were we? Right. No. Uh, so, you guys take a long rest? Uh, is that your, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Ruby, yeah, I'll get my spells back. Fuck yeah. Imagine, the Mur- game, baby. Imagine Murph, like, mm, fuck yeah. <laughs> ah. um, am I saying it right? Am I, am I saying it right? Fuck yes. Is that how <laughs> I say it? Um... And then I'm just going to go up and add two levels to my character. Is that cool? No, not that part. <laughs> no, I knew it was pushing. <laughs> can we can we can we order extra levels from the homunculi? <laughs> I would like to order a level nine increase just for this mission. Yeah. Start out like Yoder did. <laughs> All right. So you guys take your long rest. Nothing really happens. The homunculi That's come by to check idea. on you. They bring Peter you some Pop. sandwiches. I wanted yes. So and the the time passes and you guys are uh, ready to continue on. <laughs> Turns out the cleaning crew is a red dragon. Everybody's burnt to death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that does make everything super easy to clean. I mean, if it's on fire, then you know. right. Nothing scours like fire. Okay. So you guys are gonna continue on. Where are you guys gonna go from here? Um, I will. I will. <laughs> I will be back up if you don't mind. <laughs> so, you guys want to check out the attic? Who's, who's going ahead? Um, I will. 
I'll go uh, forward. Uh, um, I will go and put my hand on you and cast guidance on you. Okay. And say, let's uh, be a little more cautious this time. Am I going Really nice to... way of saying, don't have mop in the front. <laughs> am I going to M14, or is, is that not the upstairs? I would vote to finish uh, the entire So there's M14, and then but then there's also, the remember, the attic you revealed above okay. M10. Yeah, I'd let's like to go to M14. Yes, I agree. Okay. Uh, so you come to M14... Uh, so you walk in, and this looks like uh, a trophy room. So there's uh, every corner of this parlor has a scarlet armchair and a reading table uh, piled high with books. Um, there's a cheery fire that burns in the fireplace, and there's a pair of swords that sit in a rack above the fireplace, and the heads of various animals mounted on the wall. You notice that there's the there's the head of a stag, a wolf, a paraton, a hellhound, and a black dragon wor- wormling. I would like to activate, as we walk in and see the heads, eyes of the grave, to look for anything that could be undead or reanimated. Is it undead? Yes. Uh, anything that is brought to back to life. I can see with eyes of the grave. I just have to look at a thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> Everything is alive. That doesn't mean animated objects, just so you know. It's just only things that are reanimated. Yeah, yeah you don't see anything. Undead. They're purely decorative uh, heads. Okay. Can't be too careful after the hands attack us. Mm-hmm. So, Murph? Yes? I want you to hold on to this for me. I think you will make better use of it. And I hand him the plus one flail. Ooh. Oh, fantastic. I will equip that immediately. Let me see if I can just give that to you. Thank you. Anyway, all right, well, what do you guys do in this room? I start to search the stacks of books for any of them with a letter on the spot. I'm going to touch nothing. I add I will... it to your equipment, Joel. What is it called? Flail plus one. What were okay. you saying? I was just going to keep an eye on the bust and make sure their eyes don't follow us. Yeah, so uh, as you look around, Gideon, you do see uh, there's another one of the books, this one with a Y on its spine on the table with reading books on it. Okay. We have six so far. I have it. The word is Britley. <laughs> So, what do you do? Nothing happened. Do you pick up the book? I do. Okay. Uh, Does a 17 and a 7, or a 7 hit you? For the sake of fuck. The 7 does not. The 17 just hits my armor. As soon as you... uh, Touch that book. The two swords hanging above the mantelpiece fly off the wall. One misses you, and then the other one strikes you for eight points of slashing damage. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dude, my dice want to kill you guys tonight. All inanimate objects want to kill us tonight. Yeah. Uh, roll initiative, gentlemen. Oh, jeez. Nine. Eight. That would be a fourteen. 
Anybody else really grateful we have a monk with us? Yeah, we're kind of squishy right now. <laughs> this little Very Again, squishy. So, uh, the swords uh, attack you. Uh, the One of the swords is going to try and swing at you again, Gideon, because it's mm-hmm. right by you. The one that, basically, the one that just hit you is going to try and strike you back. This time, it's only for uh, 10, so it misses. It flies wild. Uh, up next is you, Gideon. Okay. Uh, are both the swords near me, or is it just the one? Uh, yeah, both the swords are near you. Okay. I will try to attack. Well, okay, what I'll do is I'll first make the attack with the quarter staff, and I'll see what happens with that before I announce the bonus attack. Okay. Uh, so that's a 20, dirty. Okay, that's, that's a hit. Okay. And uh, that is five points damage. Okay. The one that just hit you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it still looks well? Yeah. Okay. And it gets a fist. Uh, that's only going to be a uh, 13. It's not going to cut it. Okay. Uh, Murph, it's your turn. Three. <laughs> I just not, imagine. Does not hit. <laughs> I just imagine. Yeah, that was a natural one. Yeah. Gideon punching the sword. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my dice hate me passionately today. Oh my god. Mob, that's your turn. I don't know which is well. I'm almost like, do we even want to fight these things? We can just leave the room and close the door. Why do we could have always done that? Why don't we just do that? Yeah, we found the book. We, we could bail. As a free action. I, like, guys, I fucking hate bail. you. I just want to say, like, I hate <laughs> you. You could have entered. <clears throat> <laughs> you could have led with that. <laughs> Boys, do we want to expedite our retreat? <laughs> yes. God okay. damn it. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back out of the room and be like, I'm not running from swords. Ah, oh, crap. I uh, used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. Um, I will. I will assist Gideon in air fencing this sword, and I will roll a sixteen to hit. That doesn't hit. If we die, it's on. <laughs> it's uh, on you and your alignment. <laughs> my my alignment? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking to Gideon. <laughs> All right, uh, another flying sword. It's going to. Uh, this one's going to go for the one that you would att- try to attack. Mop is going to try and turn around, and it's going to hit for. Uh, four points of damage. Ow. All right. Um, and then the other one is going to continue trying to attack Gideon. Uh, that one is going to miss for, uh, yeah, it's going to miss. So, uh, Gideon, it's your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to attack the one that attacked me again. Uh, that's probably going to miss, because that's even lower than last time, but I yeah. will take the fist. Fist. Well, that's a natural one. Yep, it was both miss. Uh, Murph. I would, uh, I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay. From just one? Or both? I believe just one. It's a seven. Believe it or not, these, uh, these swords are not high in wisdom. They take... Uh, <laughs> I use Toll the Dead and they take seven points of damage. 
Are you using that on the one that was already damaged, or the one that was... Uh, the one that was already damaged. Okay, so then it's seven. got that increased damage die. Oh, what? you are correct. Oh, oh no. does it take more damage? It's a oh, that's damage. 11. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, the sword is like... Ting! Like, it's chipped. It's, uh, it's like, warped a little bit, but it is still... Uh, still standing. Uh, that is, uh, Mop's turn. I can't hit on a 17. <laughs> Alright, I'll try again. Um, can I focus the one that Gideon's fighting? The one that's... Hurt? Turning? Yeah, tarnished. Yeah. Chipped. Yeah. yeah, chipped and warped and... Hey, that's a 19. That's a hit. Uh, how do you fin? What do you do to the sword? Because it only had one HP left. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna batter it down, and then as it like falls to the ground, I'm gonna put a boot on it, and then just pry the handle up so I snap the blade in half. You just you just hear no. Not really. <laughs> Can't understand common. <laughs> now, Pat, can you run? You're not fit to open letters. Toss the handle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is now. Uh, that's Mop, so now it's the, the remaining sword's turn, who is now angry that you killed its brother. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, that is a 17 to hit. Yep. I rolled max damage. It's, it's a 9. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's Gideon's turn. I'll attack. Uh, how does the 15 treat you? Uh, that's not going to do it. You need a 17. All right. All right. Both attacks missed then. All right. Uh, Murph, your turn. Um, I would like a wisdom saving throw from the... This one's not been damaged yet, right? Right. Okay. I need so a wisdom save. Still wisdom save. Uh, that's a three. <laughs> uh, you take two points of damage. Okay. And then for my bonus... I will use... Healing word. Okay. Seven points of healing. The map. Thank you much. You are very welcome. Okay. Uh, that is Mop's turn. I don't like getting stabbed, so I will counter stab. Ho ho ho! That's a twenty-two. Oh, that, that'll do it. Hey, Mop woke up. <laughs> I like, <"Ooh>, what? <laughs> ah. um, that's that's six damage. All right. Uh, oh, dude, not stab me. Technically, it's slashing, but... Uh, dude, not slash me. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is the sword's turn again, and uh, the sword is going to try and strike you again, and yep. miss it. <laughs> Not this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is back around to you, Gideon. Okay. Attack. Okay, so both of them will oh, hit this yep, time. That, that's going to do it. All right. Let's see how the dice feel. Okay, so not great. Uh, I believe that's uh, five and four, nine points damage. That's exactly what we needed. Finish this sword. Finish it. Finish him. Did you just okay. assume the sword's gender? I did. <laughs> and for that, I'm sorry. Not. 
uh, it's my game. The sword, the swords are males. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, the DM has spoken. The DM has spoken. Uh, there's no assumptions being made here. Uh, Gideon, how do you finish the sword? Um, well, technically, it would have been the fist that would have finished the sword. So what I do is I actually grab the handle of it, and I just run it into the wall. Nice. I like that. Uh, the sword is like... So- Oh, it's muffled in the drywall. I love yeah, it's it. like it's like the the muffle the the swords like tries to like dislodge, and it's just like <laughs> it's just like can't move. It's like twitching a little bit, but it's just like eventually just like meh. like somehow the sword is able to like look dejected. <laughs> <laughs> it droops. The blade droops. Like yeah, yeah, just a little bit. All right. Uh, you guys have cleared that room. Uh, did you get the, the puzzle book? I did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, is uh, there anything else of uh, note in this uh, room? You said that it was uh, kind of a comfortable sort of room. Uh, nothing in this room. Uh, then the... Uh, you guys going to head to 15? Let's do it. All right. Uh, you walk in, and this is obviously a bedroom. It's open and airy. Uh, there's a canopy bed with rich scarlet curtains that occupy one corner. There's a jug and a wash basin that stand on top of a chest of door- drawers, and a fluffy back black cat napping on a scarlet easy chair. One wall is covered with a large painting of a gold dragon perched heroically on a mountaintop. Um, as you guys enter the room, the cat jumps down from the chair and stretches, and then uh, starts, you know, kind of like f- walks up to you guys, following you around, meowing. That's it. Okay. Where you guys do? So the canopy bed, is it? Is it a four-poster? Yeah. Could I, uh, could I jump up on the bed and reach above the canopy and see if there's something on top? Sure. Roll for it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the cat kills you. <laughs> no, no the, uh, the, nothing attacks uh, you in this room. The canopy, uh, bed, the canopy bed grapples me, of yeah. course. It's a rug of smothering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, there's nothing on top of the bed. Uh, but as you look around a little bit, uh, you can see there's a po- there's a book sitting on the like dresser. I am not going to touch it. Or I will. Nothing happens. You have found another book. This one has the letter E. Ooh. Uh, did but I now we have you, did seven. I tell you the letter of the la- the previous one. Oh, mm-hmm. why? Yep. Right. I got it. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, I'm going to take the cat. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to start can carrying it around with me. Okay. Can now, we know there's animal, seven Can books, I get an right? animal handling check? Oh, okay. Animal handling? Okay, sure. Yeah. Why not? Uh, I don't think you know the number. I thought they said... Uh, you told us the number a while ago. Did I say there were seven? If I said there were seven, then there. Then there so. Uh, how does a 20 treat you? That'll do it. The cat's like the cat seems very pleased with this treatment. So, okay, I have a cat, guys. So, do we? I'm I'm gonna sit down and start arranging the books to spell a word because I'm okay. assuming that's the puzzle. Yep. Or damn it. Yes. Well, I mean, it's not really like it doesn't take a. Great, yeah. to be I like, <laughs> you have seven letters, make a word. Yeah. All right. Uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to uh, explore out into M16. Uh, M16. 
Uh, the door of this bedroom leads to a very nice uh, balcony uh, with slate flagstones. Uh, there's some greenery and colory uh, flowers that you can see below in the arboretum. And you remember your little encounter with the fairy um, dragons and <laughs> what you I do have next. Two, I, I only have two words that I could come up with. Um, that is brightly and liberty. The only two that make sense with these letters. I thought library, but we're missing more R's. Make sure something. Yeah, there's no there's no G for brightly, so I think liberty's probably the best one. Uh, well, it's mm -hmm. oh, I misspelled it then. B r i t e l y. So like light bright from the eighties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like. Yeah. Board that well then just yeah. liberty. So then. as soon as you say liberty, uh, you can feel a sort of like thrum throughout the mansion, but uh, nothing nothing happens in your vicinity. I immediately hit the book. Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Have to be safe. In the book, maybe. Um, so nothing happened. We uh. Does, does, back outside, down. does outside look any different? No. Gideon's got a good idea. Perhaps you go back down to the entrance. Yep. Uh, so as you guys uh, come down, uh, as you uh, go to the main entrance of the mansion, uh, you see that the door has reappeared. All right, so stay with me on this. We haven't checked out the attic yet, but we have the word to leave. I'm just going to tell you there's nothing in the, the attic. There's a voice in my head that said nothing is in the attic. Let's go. <laughs> the The attic was would have revealed to you that there was a secret room in M3, the, that there was a secret room, but you already found the secret room, so there's no point in going to the attic. FYI. So you've uh, you've forgotten all qualms to emancipate the uh, the homunculi, Murph. You said they like it here, so uh, <laughs> fuck this place and fuck the homunculi, <laughs> and I walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost died to name objects. Um, I start petting Mister Whiskers, and we leave. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I'm gone. Fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guys, feel like Mr. Whiskers, like, if this cat develops a psychotic magical power, I'm going to be like... You try to take the cat? Yeah, yeah, I take the cat with me. The cat. Did you hear its name? Yeah, Mr. Whiskers. The cat I was tries to Brett. get away. <laughs> the cat does not want to leave the mansion. Well, I, do, do I need another animal handling check? Sure. Calm it down? Yeah, you can, you can try okay. to keep the cat. <laughs> cool. cats, cats allow you to be around, so... I want to I wanna take it back home to give it to my daughter. See what I did there? It all loops back around. Uh, how does the 17 treat you? You have to keep the fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, Mr. Wister's origin story. Uh, oh my god. Uh, the greatest worst character. Of all time. <laughs> you're, Mr. You're, Whiskers. You're griping now. When the cat ends up going through a cubby hole that we can't fit through and saves us in a later campaign. If Mr. Whiskers evolves into right, the character so he guys, was. Do you guys leave the mansion or not? Oh, we're gone. We're oh, so I we're gone. fucking booked out as soon as I saw the door. He's like, you want to save the monk? I said, fuck those guys. I'm out. We did a, we did a Ginyu Force pose. Wow. You know? Why am I a tease, Ava? <laughs> <laughs> no one's dead yet. Yes, um, that was a terrible experience, and I never. Uh, so as you guys leave the mansion, uh, you see lying on the floor outside the mansion is the body of Matrius. Uh, medicine dead? check, please. Uh, so you leave the mansion. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, we're out. One second. Oh, is he? Is he going to cliffhanger us? Because no, 630? we're not. Is it six thirty? Yeah, it is. Oh, shit.
He is gonna cliffhanger us. Uh, yeah, because someone has to leave early. Night uh, medicine check, Matrius. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, but uh, as you try to check on Matrius, I am going to. He goes. I would have lived if you hadn't taken a long rest. Uh, does a seventeen hit you? Fuck Which one you of us? Sideways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, as you l- bend over to check on Matrius, you feel a stabbing pain in your back as you feel like you are stung. Uh, I need a constitution saving throw. Natural 20 for 23. Okay, uh, you feel, uh, you get stung and you feel a, like, poison, what feels like a poison, but because of your, like, training with your teacher, uh, you're able to, like, I like shrug off the effects and like reach in your herbalism bag and like at uh, the uh, like the antidote for the proper poison. Um, and as you like look over your shoulder, you see there is a there is an imp that just stung you in the back. Um, I would like a wisdom saving throw from the imp. All right, yeah. Uh, wisdom save. It's a ten. All right then. Eight points of damage as I told the dead on it. You know what? That's gonna do it. As he, as he, as he realizes that like his poison didn't take effect on you, the imp's eyes go wide. And it, uh, the last thing it hears is a bell tolling as it, like, crumbles to ash. I, and I'm that's and I'm where like, we'll end our episode. Until uh, next time. It didn't, is, is the body dead, though? The body, I is, the body is dead. You Fuck. can presume that that imp figurine that you, he showed you last time came back to life and whatever spell it was under was broken when he left the mansion. I gotta go, gentlemen. But uh-huh. we are at the end of our episode. Um, if you enjoyed what you all saw, please uh, thank you again, Ava, for joining us again, and Mary, as always. I uh, saw you guys messaging. Uh, if, if you enjoyed our episode, we'll be back next week with another episode of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but on Monday, we're going to have a special episode uh, where we talk about vampires and their history and lore and all such fun in preparation for spooky season. If you enjoy our book episodes, the following week we'll be talking about what book, Brian? Uh, it's called The Hellbound Heart. It is the uh, book that inspired the movie Hellraiser. Yes, uh, and so that will be the following Brian, week. Never- if your butt dice betray you, such as mine did, where can they go to get new dice? They can go to tabletoploot.com. Tabletop Loot is my one-stop shop for all of my favorite dice, including the dice that I've been rolling this session. Uh, they give you uh, four minimum sets of dice every single month uh, that you can get for only $25. In fact, if you go to their store right now, you can put in the code NOL. 15 to get 15% off any dice in their store. Uh, that's NOL 15, Nerds of Legend 15, and uh, they will give you 15% off. Good call. Okay. And as always, uh, check us out on our social medias. That's a, another good place to know where stuff's going on and also where we share funny memes. Uh, and we will see you guys again on Monday. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you.